Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some more Ace Attorney. September 7, 3.11pm, Detention Center, Visitor's Room. Well, hello! I didn't expect anyone to visit me in such a dank place as this. It's really quite moving. Not! You stinking lawyer, I hope you die! Have you come to laugh? Yes, laugh at the fallen Miss May! No, no, not really. There's something I wanted to ask. Unfortunately, there's nothing I want to be asked. Haven't you done enough questioning, you spiky head? Here we go again. Please, you're scaring the security guard. So, what is it you wish to ask of me then? Hm? For starters, how did you get to be so totally whacked? That's a little bit... Ableist of a question, Phoenix. I'm glad you didn't ask that out loud. About the man who stayed with you in your hotel room. Can you tell me about him? Where is he? Come on. No way, Jose. Hmm. Maybe if I had something to get her to talk. The wire tap? Why did you place a wiretap on Mia's phone? Whoa, when you say it like that, it sounds so cold, so criminal. Um, tapping people's phones is a crime, Miss May. Oh, and I suppose you learned that in lawyer school? <laughs> Creep. This woman is impossible to talk to. Say, why are you so angry? I mean, you don't look like a bad person. Oh, that does it. Bottom-feeding, scum-sucking lawyer. B bottom I can't tell. Does she have a thing against lawyers? Or just against me? Okay, we can't get anything out of her, so we're gonna have to look around for some more help with that. Uh, we're going back to our office. Here we go. September 7. Bay and Co. Law Offices. Looks like forensics is taking the day off today. Detective Gumshoe's nowhere in sight. The police really gave this place a working over. I doubt there are any valuable clues left. I suppose it can't hurt to take a look around, though. Okay, there's nothing we can do here just yet. Uh, we'll be given a hint later about some information that is in the office, but we can't find it without that hint, so we'll have to wait. Uh, let's go back to the Gatewater Hotel. September 7, Gatewater Hotel, room 303. Ah, welcome, sir. Quite the performance today, if I dare, dare say so myself. Oh, uh, thanks. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that. No, no, not at all, sir. Your efforts today can only help the Gatewater's rep, as they say. Huh? Rep? Yes, our reputation will swell as the hotel where the murderer used a wiretap. We can charge a premium for the room, of course. It'll be great for business, sir. Whoa, whoa, Miss May hasn't been charged with murder. I too will become famous, the bellboy who brought the murderer iced coffee. Why do I feel like we're both stuck in the same bad dream? So, you are our honoured guest, please let me know if there's anything I can bring you. There's still a screwdriver over here. Huh? There's still a screwdriver stuck in that drawer. Ah, please leave that as it is, sir. That's the drawer of terror, hiding place of the murderer's wiretap. It's set to become one of the most popular attractions here. This guy's serious. I don't believe it. About Miss May. Oh, her, sir, not to boast, but I knew the moment I saw her. She'd do it, I said. Do what? I'm starting to think the most suspicious person here is this guy. I wanted to ask you about the man who was with Miss May. Ah, yes. He struck me as a real lady killer, if you'll pardon the expression. I knew it from the moment I saw him, sir. He and I are of the same ilk. We both carry the scent of danger. There we are in total agreement, Mr. Psycho Bellboy. Again with the ableism in your thoughts, Phoenix. Don't do that. If you had a photo of that man, I'm quite sure I could identify him. A photo? Hmm... Uh, we can find a photo of that man. We will be bringing it back later. Not just yet, though. 
Could you tell me about this hotel? Absolutely. And on that subject, I have an excellent idea, sir. Currently, this hotel is known as the Gatewater. I propose that we add a subtitle. A subtitle? The Gatewater Hotel. Murder Manor. Well, what do you think? Um, sounds great. Whatever floats your tea set. Okay, the only other place we can go right now is the Grossberg Law Offices, so let's head over there. September 7, Grossberg Law Offices. Huh, looks like Grossberg is out today. Again. Maybe he's avoiding me for some reason. You may notice this room looks a bit different to before. There's this uh, big open space here where there was a painting of a man wearing a straw hat before. Wait a second. Wasn't there a giant painting hanging on that wall? Yeah, yeah, it was a painting of... It was a painting of a guy wearing a straw hat. Was he a fisherman? Wasn't it? It wasn't a very memorable painting, anyhow. I believe it doesn't matter what you pick. Like, Phoenix just can't remember what the painting was. Uh, over here we can see there's a little picture on the desk now. That was not there before. That's what we're here for. What's this? Old photos? There are two lying here. Something's been written in pencil on the backs. DLC... Uh, DL6 Incident Exhibit A. DL6 Incident Exhibit B. Let's take a look at these. I'm sure I've seen this person somewhere. Perhaps I'll borrow this photo. I'm sure no one will miss just one little photo. And it might be a valuable clue. I'll take it for now. Photograph quietly added to the court record. We actually want the other one. I wasn't sure which one was A and which one was B. A photo lies in the desk. Maybe I should switch it with the one I took. I think I'll swap them. Photograph added to the court record. So yeah, we now have a photograph of this guy. And you may recall from the beginning of this case that this guy is the murderer. So this is a useful photo to have. Uh, we're going to show this photo to the bellboy so that the bellboy can say, Oh hey, it's a photo of the man that was with Miss May, because it is. That's who that is. And then we will have proof that he was there, which is handy. Uh, if we go back to the hotel over here. Take a look at this photo. That's him, detective. Um, I'm the lawyer. Oh, I know that. I just wanted to say detective once. You know how it is. No. No, I don't. Without a doubt, that is the man who checked in with Miss April May. How about I write an affidavit swearing that that's him? An affidavit? This guy is way too excited about this. Well, sure, why not? Yes! I've always wanted to write an affidavit, sir. From henceforth, I will be known as the bellboy who swore the affidavit. <laughs> Just hurry up and write it. Bellboy's affidavit added to the court record. So yeah, we now have proof that the man in that photo is the man who was staying with Miss May. Not even Miss May can play dumb to this. As you can see, there's the affidavit and there's the photograph. It's interesting, it's interesting that they only have one page, like the same amount of stuff on a page in this version. Um, it's the same as in the DS version, it was in two rows instead of one on that one because the screen is so much smaller, but they could actually fit more stuff on the screen very clearly, so it's interesting that they didn't do that. Hmm, doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go talk to Miss May now. You again? Can't you take a hint and stay gone? Hey, the only reason I'm back here is because you won't talk to me. Oh, so it's my fault now. You don't just have spiky hair, you also have a spiky heart. That does it. When this case is done, I'm shaving my head. <laughs> about the man who stayed with you in your hotel room. Can you tell me about him? Where is he? I'm not telling. Look, he's being accused of murder. I don't think you want to be protecting him. Hmm. Would you have sold out the late Miss Faye to the cops? No. See? Damn. Hmm. Maybe if I had something to get her to 
Hulk. Well, I do. I have a photograph. Have a look at this. Look, I've said several times, I'm not telling you... Where did you... Aha! A reaction. This is him, isn't it? What? Who? When? Why? It is him. This is the man who stayed in your hotel room the night of the murder. No! No! That's not right! Nice try, Miss Cooperative. That's not her name. <laughs> D do you have proof it was him? Hm? Y yeah, proof! Show me proof! I'm so close. Well, I do have proof. Here you go. Would you have a look at this? What's that? The bellboy's affidavit that tells us everything he saw. Such as the man you checked in with. It was most definitely this guy. Now I'm getting somewhere. This is it, all or nothing. Time to do a little bluff. No use playing dumb, if indeed that's an act. If you don't talk, I'm taking this info to the press. What? Even though he should have been witness to murder, your little friend was missing. I'm sure the press would have a field day with his reputation. Oh, fine, I'll talk. You... you win, lawyer. Yes! Man, that felt good. It's great to be alive. Why are you pumping your fists in the air? <laughs> now, tell me about the man you were with. That man, he's my boss. Red White, the president of the Information Gathering Conglomerate Blue Corp. Red, white, blue. You can see where it came from. <laughs> Red? White? Information gathering? Well, I suppose you could call it a detective agency. Hmm. So this is the man who was with you the night of the murder? I'm... I'm scared to talk. I don't want to end up like her. It's okay. I'll just ask Mr. White himself. Can you tell me where Blue Corp is located? Mr. Red White, at last. Finally, a lead on this guy. If April May couldn't have done it, that leaves him. Time to take action. Bow Boy's affidavit discarded. It's a bit rude. I mean, it's gonna be a historical item. It's, he's the bellboy who swore the affidavit. You should hang on to that. It could be valuable someday. Anyway, yeah, we can go to Blue Corp now. We don't know what it looks like, but we can go there. September 7th, Blue Corp Incorporated. Ugh, that's obnoxious. CEO's office. What's with the surreal decor? Welcome! Please furnish me with the title of your personage. What the? Your name! What's your name? I was just incredibly asking the title that you go by. Uh, right. Phoenix Wright. Inquirably? Mr. Wright, is it? Right, I see. Splendiferous. Perhaps I have intimidated you with my giantesque vocabulary. What is this guy's problem? I'm Red White, CEO of Blue Corp. You know, corporate expansion official? It's not, it's not what a CEO is. My business dealings bring me into contact with the elite of the elite. So I'm afraid I'm not used to conversing with the wordily challenged. What a fruitcake. Hmm. Let me guess. You are an attorney fresh out of law school, are you not? That's the only explanation for why you would come to me meet me like this. What does he mean by that? No matter. So, what business does a mighty lawyer have with a man such as myself? Yipes, this guy's arrogance meter is off the scale! <laughs> Miss May is an employee of Blue Corp, is she not? Correct. She was my secretariat. What a shock it was to hear what she has done! What she's done? You mean the wiretap? Indeed! She is paid to answer phones. Tapping them is not in her job description. She does gather information for us as part of her duties. But I assure you we do not condone illegal methods. Be gay, do crimes, Mr. White. Be gay, do crimes. 
It is ineffable that she would do this. Sounds like he's trying to turn Miss May into a scapegoat. On the night of the murder, were you in April May's hotel room? Who can say? I seldom pay attention to mundane details such as time and place. My motto is, don't worry, be happy. Still, Mr. White, the hotel bellboy has stated on the record that he does remember you very clearly. No matter. The bellboy can say what he pleases. I still won't talk to you. If you want me to speak, put me on the witness stand. Although I doubt you'd be capable of doing that. Hmm, he raises a good question, actually. Why didn't the prosecution call him as a witness? He should have seen the same thing as April May. Oh ho ho. The police. The courts. To me, they are mere toys, playthings for my amusement. What kind of company is Blue Corp, anyway? Ah, excellent question. We buy and sell various kinds of information. We are a company of the future. You might say, we are the future. Sell information? In just 10 years, I've built this business up into the grand office you see now. Ah, in case you were wondering, Blue Corp was named after the color blue. I, Red White of Blue Corp, as founder and CEO, named it so. And why, you ask? Because I like the color blue, of course. Fantabulistic, is it not? Uh, there's something that's been bothering me. Yes, what might that be? That big painting on the wall over there? You know, I've actually seen that painting before. Oh? Just yesterday, actually. Your point being? My point is simple. Uh, rather, my question is simple. Why is that painting hanging on your wall? Mr. Wrong, was it? Right. It appears you don't fully grasp your position here. I ask again, who are you? Um, huh? A lawyer? No, my feeble friend. A mere lawyer. Worth nothing. Zilch. Zippo. Nada. Just like that sorry excuse for an attorney, Grodyberger. What? <laughs> Oof, that <laughs> part. Oh, oh uh, he, he punched me. Well, Mr. Lawyer, what will you do, huh? Charge me with assault. Charge away, I welcome it, for it is you who will be found guilty. What? Heed my exposition, the police, the courts, they all do my bidding. So you say. But I wonder, is that kind of control really possible? I don't expect you to understand, it is a world beyond your compensation. You came here from Grody Burgers, I presume. Mr. Grossbergs, yes. Then you must ask him, why is it that this painting of his hangs here? Perhaps then he will tell you. Perhaps he will explain how a man can live life purely for personal profit. Go now, skedaddle. There is nothing more to discuss. Yeah, we have to go back to the Grossberg Law Offices now. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Huh? I don't think he's noticed me standing here. Maybe I should clear my throat? Ahem! Jumping Je 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 Jehoshaphats! Wow, that's quite a word. <laughs> oh, you! W what's wrong? You look so pensive, like an old man at the end of his days. Hm? I'm not senile yet! I was just thinking about this whole mess. Something's really bothering him, that much is clear. So you came to see the trial? Yes, yes I did. Something was bothering me all last night, you see. Couldn't get a wink of sleep. Really? What was that? Well, uh, you see, it's just me as sister, that poor girl. My boy, I do owe you my thanks, truly. I don't know what I would have done if things had gone poorly for the girl. I asked before, but why did you refuse her request for defense? I think I have a right to know. A right, Mr. Wright? No, no, I'm sorry. It's just, I need more time to think about it, my boy. He does seem troubled about something. I'm starting to have a feeling I know what it is. So I paid Blue Corp a visit. 
Oh? Oh, I see. Mr. Grossberg, I have to admit, something has been bothering me. Oh? What is it? Well, out with it, my boy. You see, it's just... Mr. Grossberg, sir, there was a giant painting hanging right there the other day, was there not? The one you said you had no intention of parting with? Well, I saw it, today. It was in the CEO's office at Blue Corp, Red White's office. So, you noticed. I suppose I should have guessed you would, it is a large painting. Mr. Grossberg, I know you and Mr. White are connected somehow. C connected you say? Yes, and I know what it is. God, I wish it was that one. That would be great. I'm gonna pick that and just see what it does, actually. I've never done it. Oh, I, I know what the right answer is already, so... It's not something I can claim to understand, but you and Mr. White are lovers, aren't you? W what My boy! You sent that painting to him. As a sign, a sign of undying love. M m my boy, please, you're letting your fancies run away with you. Where do you get these bizarre ideas? I... I don't understand how you could... That's because I'm not... We're not... Don't be ridiculous! Enough. I'll swallow my pride and tell you all. I knew it. They are lovers. N no, we are not lovers. <laughs> yeah, they are. I mean, Mr. White is a jerk, so I understand that you don't want to date him. We are not lovers. Red White is a man who makes his living through intimidation. Blue Corp is a company that excels in finding people's weaknesses, I'm afraid. I've been paying them 15 years now. 15 years. All because of the DL6 incident, as you may have guessed. The name on the back of those photographs. As you suspected, I could not stand in defense of Maya, Maya because of this. White would have destroyed me if I did. So that's the connection. It is hard for me to tell you this, my boy. Arresting Red White would be nigh on impossible. Impossible? Why? He has information on everyone and gives him an iron grip. He owns judges, attorneys, prosecutors, police, and politicians. What? They are bound and able to do harm to themselves and therefore to him. Don't look at me like that. What you see is nothing more than the weight of many years. What is the DL6 incident? DL6 is nothing more than the sorting code the police gave the case. It was 15 years ago now. I received a request from a medium, a spirit medium. A medium? Her name was Misty Faye. Faye? Indeed, she was Mia's mother. She had been investigating a murder at the quest of the police. And she failed. As a result, the police called her a fraud. A cab. This is what Maya was talking about the other day. I did all I could for her, and in the end, cleared her of wrongdoing. That murder case, however, remains unsolved to this day. That case is the DL6 incident. But why were you blackmailed over this, Mr. Grossberg? The DL6 incident was top secret at the time. It made sense. The police didn't want people to know they were using a medium. They couldn't let people know. But one person found out. I... I told him. You told White? He offered me riches. It is an embarrassment to me now. Because I talked to the police were mocked far and wide. In secret, they began looking for the one who sold them out. Of course, White heard about it, and he came to me. Only this time, the offer was blackmail. I see. White controls the law of this country as he sees fit. Yet if you would still challenge him, have a close look at Mia's office. Mia's office? She followed his every move for years. She may have recorded something of what she found. So yeah, we have to go back to the Faye and Carol offices now. Boop. It's funny, looking at this room, it seems so normal. Hard to imagine a murder took place here. Mr. Grossberg said there would be clues. Maybe I should have another look. Well, let's look over here where the files are. 
Old case is the chief of a work ton of files here. They're in alphabetical order. Let's take a look. Which file should I look at? Uh, a to I? Let's see if there's a, a record in this file that catches my eye. Oh, get it? Ah! A, B, F. Misty Fay. That's me and Maya's, Maya's mother. Hmm. Should I take a look? I have tarnished the Fay name, leaving only these words. My mother vanished. I was determined to find the ones who had made my mother blame herself in this way. Using the power that runs in my family, I held an audience with the dead. Finally, the names of two men surfaced. One was Marvin Grossberg, a lawyer who sold my mother's information for riches. The other was the man who sold the information to the press. This parasite who makes his fortune on threats and coercion. His name is... Hmm. The record stops there. So Mia knew Grossberg. I mean, it's obvious who the other person is. Like, you can figure it out from context, Phoenix. Uh... We're gonna look at the other files now. Let's see, J2S. Nothing much in here. Maybe I'll just skim some of this? <sighs> well, no harm in flipping through a bit, I guess. The biggest part's here at the end in S. Suicide? Ew. She has a collection of suicide reports. There's politicians, policemen... There's writing on most of these in pencil. White. This is Mia's handwriting. Wait. I get it. Mia thought he was involved in these suicides. White drove them all to... I can use these newspaper clippings. Hmm, let's find the most disturbing one. Newspaper clipping added to the court record. Okay, now comes the part where Phoenix is a really, really terrible investigator. There's one of these in each investigation segment in the first game. Um, he kind of stops after this, but in every case of the first game, he actually goes to the murderer, like so, and gives them incriminating evidence, which he then doesn't have because he gave it to them. It's really, really silly. <sighs> well, aren't you persistent? Sorry, but there's something I have to ask you. Mr. Lawyer, I really hate having to repeat myself. But it seems the message has not yet penetrated your thick skull. Stop bothering me. If you try my patience further, I fear a nasty accident may occur. Do I make myself clear? Transparent. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk to him some more. I think we're past him to talk about April May. I've got to put this guy on the spot and quick. Hmm? What's the matter? You seem distressed. This guy's a pro at pulling the wool over people's eyes. I've got to put him on the spot, and quick! Stop that! Your hot gaze is giving me goosebumps! There's no point in asking someone this crooked a straight question. I need some evidence I can use as ammo. What's wrong? Is something stuck to my face? Why, yes. There's my eyes, and my nose, and my mouth. But of course I jest. You need not restrain your mirth, my friend. It is okay to indulge in my cosmopolitan sense of humour. I will not think less of you. So yeah, we actually have to give him this evidence. Which obviously is a terrible idea. Because we're in his office with no witnesses. And he could just kill us. But we're gonna have to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and do it. This is the only clue that Mia left me. Well, that's not so true. You chose one newspaper clipping out of a big collection of newspaper clippings. You could probably use another one. i better make this one count. Mr. White, see this? It's an article describing the suicide of a politician. He was embezzling secret government funds. Then one day, word got leaked to the press. The very next day, he took his own life. And this concerns me how? I found this article in Mia's office. Miss Mia? She had a file filled with articles like this. Every one of them was labelled a single word. White. Mr. White, I know what you did to this politician. You were blackmailing him. Blackmail? Not just him either. You were threatening and coercing hundreds of others. 
who were involved in all of the suicide cases that Mia investigated. This company is built on blackmail. I'm right, aren't I? What a bizarre accusation. Mr. Wrong. What is it that you should be doing now? Investigating me? No, no, no. I think not. You should be searching for the one who killed Miss Mia. Beep. Secretary's office, hello. Mr. Wrong will be leaving now. Yes, sir. I'll send someone right away. Wait a second, Mr. White. You are absolutely right. I should be looking for the killer now. And actually, I've done better. I found him. He's sitting right in front of me. Just what are you insinuating? Mia was on to you. She was keeping tabs. For this reason, you had April May tapping her phone. Then Mia was murdered, and all documents about you mysteriously disappeared. So the culprit would be... Even a child could work it out, Mr. White. You did it. Pip. Secretary's office. We won't be needing an escort for Mr. Wrong. Instead, please connect me to the public prosecutor's office. Of course, sir. One moment, please. Why, is that you? What are you doing calling me at a time like this? Hello, Chief Prosecutor. I've changed my mind. I want to testify tomorrow. What's this about? The Mia Fey case. I witnessed the murder, you see. And thus, as a very important witness, I would like to testify. What? what? Why now? I thought you said you didn't want to go to court. Quietitude. Quiet quietude. I told you I changed my mind, didn't I? Oh, and one other thing. Send the police over here right away. The man is standing right in front of me. He looks dazed, but could be violent. What? What man? Are you even listening? The executioner. The hatchet man. The liquidator. The killer man. What? Mr. White, this is another one of those... Chief Prosecutor. I do not believe you're in a position to freely offer your opinions to me, correct? I'm telling you to send the police, now! Beep. Did I not tell you, Mr. Wrong? You are a mere lawyer. As was Miss Mia. How dare you! I'll point the finger at you, and you will be tried as Miss Mia's killer. The case is as good as settled. No lawyer of any worth will defend you. I have friends in the local lawyers association, you see. You'll be given a lawyer so stupendously inept they'll make even you look competent. I... I feel faint. Detective Gumshoe reporting, sir. Ah, Butts. Harry Butts. Right, actually, Phoenix Wright. And my friend's name is Larry. Oh, right, sorry, pal. Butts was that murderer, right? Detective Gumshoe. I present to you the man who killed Miss Mia Fey. W what? Take this despicable human being into custody. Farewell, Mr. Wrong. September 8, 3.37pm, Detention Centre, Visitor's Room. I can't believe it's only been a day since the first trial. My trial begins tomorrow. White's going to set a trap for me, and the prosecution will be in on it, of course. Edgeworth included. An attorney was assigned to me by the state yesterday. I refused. I had an idea. Right. Mr. Wright. Oh, Maya. Great. I let you out of detention. Just now, yes. It's all thanks to you. Huh. Now I'm afraid we'd switch places. What? You mean, you... I explained what had happened to Maya. I don't believe it. How many people does that man need to destroy before he's satisfied? My mother? My sister? And now you! This has gone too far. Mr. Wright, please tell me, is there anything I can do? Um, well... N none of these will actually work. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. Uh... Right, okay, listen up. I want you to help me break out of here. You mean, a jailbreak? Yeah, tonight's our only chance. Alright. Huh? 
Oh, I better go get a hacksaw while the stores are still open. Oh, 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 and a rope ladder, and a getaway car. Can you drive? Wait, 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 wait. What, what, what? I'm kidding, it was a joke. No way. No, really, I was kidding. But thanks, it's good to know you're on my side. And there really isn't anything you can do for me anyway. But, but I can't just sit here and do nothing. I've got to give that man a piece of my mind. Just a piece? Okay. Then, come to the trial tomorrow? Uh, okay, I'll be there. I'll show them a thing or two. Times may change, yet with crime it's the same old story. In fact, it's gotten worse. Lengthy court proceedings are no longer realistic. Beginning a few years ago, a limit of three days was put on initial court trials. Almost all finish in a day, most with a guilty verdict. I never thought I would end up in the defendant's chair myself for this case. With the true culprit appearing as the star witness. This is it. Tomorrow, it's me or him. And that's the investigation segment over. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, next time we'll be moving on to the next trial segment, I suppose. And basically, yeah, the case will continue at that point. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed.